When I was in high school, I used to hang out all night on Park Avenue in Spanish Harlem with my boy DC. And one night, I made it back home to New Jersey in just enough time to miss that last number 24 bus. And I didn't know what to do, so I called up my mom's and she was like, sorry you felt like you had to wake me up. I hope you make it home safely. I love you. Good luck. <laughs> and from the moment I hung up the receiver, it was on. I had to make it four and a half miles up Central Avenue through Newark, East Orange, and Orange. And it's like the movie The Warriors was playing through my mind, and I figured there was a 50-50 chance I would survive, and I kept envisioning all types of crazy motherfuckers jumping from alleys and <laughs> stoops with baseball bats and brass knuckles and chains and knives. But eventually, by the grace of God, I made it home just fine. Now, now, my mother did what a lot of mothers would have done back in those circumstances in those times, but, but these times, these here times is different. In these times, if your young black child call you in the middle of the night, you might want to wake that ass up, get dressed, and go get him. Otherwise, you may have just spoken to the next law enforcement harassment victim. In, in these times of Black Lives Matter, where the souls of black folks are scattered with the dreams and hopes of dusky mothers and grandmothers who themselves could become the next Eleanor Bumpers with them two shotgun blasts. And alas, if your gifted and talented honor roll student great candidate for scholarships finds herself in the crosshairs of the wrong cop, look, moms and pops, I'm not sure her exemplary demeanor or her stellar report card will be able to get her out of it. Nah, she might as well have on that limited edition Easy e fuck the police t-shirt with that red, black, and green jacket and blazing on the back with Sandra Bland, smoking a cigarette, holding up the middle finger on both hands. It's like the cops creep up to your child wearing a sick-ass smile, listening to their favorite slow jam. The program ain't changed from Oscar Grant to Freddie Gray with that din 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 and din, din and din, din and still Freddy's dead, even though we've been cutting 12 inches that represent the 12 bullets that was put into little Bobby Hutton, cause ain't nothing new under the sun. It's just these days the phrase Black Lives Matter has become a rallying cry for cops, some of whom believe they can't justify their self-worth unless they prove Black Lives Matter not. Got a Mike Brown, hands up, man down, cover up. Black Lives Matter, and immediately before and after death, some of us get to hang out at the bar with Sean Bell. We'll get to sip shots of Flint, Michigan water and, and smoke cartons of Eric Garner cigarettes. Ain't no true right of action for black men and black women whose very names have been reduced to action words. In other words, they will snatch you out of that Bentley Benz or Beamer, and your upwardly mobile ass will commence to getting the Allowed King or Loima. They got euthanasia tasers. Beat them silly billy clubs and kill a nigga trigger fingers. The thing is, they on that Laquan McDonald skag. They addicted to them black bodies and black body bags. Got them, got them nodding off. Got them tapping that arm and, and, and put them in the zone. They could, they could die in their sleep. They on that Ayanna Monet, Stanley Jones. It's coming down. Chew the last poets. Jones coming down. Daybreak. Jones coming down. Got the shakes, Jones coming down. Nose running, joint dripping, mind slipping, body aches. They say it's impossible to convince a man that what he's doing is evil when his very livelihood depends on him doing it. They say if I bring up the need to address black on black murder within the context of Black Lives Matter, that would just take a perfectly myopic solution to our situation and ruin it. But, but perhaps they'd at least allow me to address the number of judges that get kickbacks from moving more and more black bodies into the privately run prison industrial complex with that order in the court. You were guilty when you got here. You were guilty. You were guilty when my family wanted to be treated to vacations. You were guilty. I hope you brought a toothbrush. You were guilty when my children's college education became too difficult to pay for. Pay for, pay for. Now, now back to our regularly scheduled program. Let's, let's pray for Black Lives Matter and let's pray for those cops who are not intimidated by the very idea of Black Lives Matter and, and let's pray for the most at risk, vulnerable and endangered lives. And then, and then when we finish praying, let's practice self-defense, self-determination, self-love self and organize.